We live in what could be considered a golden era of trading card games. No matter what your cup of tea is, what your favorite IP or game system is, there seems like there's something for everybody. But one thing remains true. The two behemoths, the two giants continue to duke it out at the top of the market as Magic the Gathering and Pokemon clearly still sit atop the mountain. And while Pokemon is thriving and always will be a top one or two TCG, depending on where you think it is, you can always let me know in the comment section below which one you think is bigger or better. It does seem that in 2024, Wizards of the Coast is handpicking and stealing certain things straight from the Pokemon trading card game. I'm super excited to get into that conversation today. The conversation involves collectability, IP character, gameplay and yes the value and pricing of products which for magic has been super controversial and I'm gonna do something I don't normally do to be super candid I really wanted to make this video because I'm most excited for this thumbnail if you like the thumbnail of the video like the video and let me know in the comment section below but it's time to have a real conversation on the channel for once so let's get into it all right Now, calling this a real conversation on the channel for once is probably not fair. We have tons of real conversations as we track every single sold listing of sealed product for popular releases of major trading card games off TCG Player. It's a lot of fun, it's a huge project, and it's led me to a lot of conclusions as we watch the market mold and shift and bend. And after about two decades in this industry, I've started to see massive shifts in Magic the Gathering, specifically when it comes to how the game is created, marketed, advertised and sent out to people like you and me who spend our hard-earned money on the product and as Magic the Gathering has turned a corner in 2024 I want to harken back to a time when well 2022 early 2023 Magic was not well, not exactly pumping things were not doing well and there's been major shifts in the last year and a half to two years that have been great for our game and our community and I believe they've come well, almost directly from the Pokemon trading card game. Now, before we get into it, I'm not claiming that Wizards of the Coast is blatantly stealing. Maybe this is just happenstance. Maybe they were like, oh my goodness, where did these concepts come from? Oh, Pokemon, were you doing this all along? I had no idea. I also don't know why Wizards of the Coast talked so fancy like that in my mind, but hey, they just do. So I want to start today's discussion with collectability. And as we get into that again, if you like content like this, Make sure you hit that sub button. Now, collectability is something that Pokemon has always crushed. The Pokemon trading card game has been easily and by far the most collectible TCG on the planet probably since its existence. I bet there was a very early spin-up period there where it wasn't, but man, we almost all have had Pokemon cards in our life at some point or another. And every once in a while, we go up to that dusty attic and we really hope that binder that we definitely remember all the first edition Charizards that we used to have being up there will be there this time. And yet, alas, it is not. And as a major Magic the Gathering fan, look around the office and the various places that we film and all the content on the channel, you know Magic's my favorite game. I often find myself peeking over the fence, if you will, and eyeballing and hemming and hawing and wishing I had the collectability of Pokemon because, as I've shown off on the channel several times, I like to collect magic things. I think they're really cool. And more specifically, it's not just the idea of collectability that Magic the Gathering is taking. Remember back to that early era of magic that I was talking about, and even before, the best card in Magic Boxes, the card that everybody wanted to show off and add to their binders, was just... It was just the most playable card, and Magic has recently taken a shift in a new direction. Between full art anime series, uh, universes within, universes beyond, and different subsets and themes in the products, we have gotten chase cards in almost every single Magic the Gather release. And I know before there were chase cards here and there. We have invocations. We have Expedition Lands, things like that. But for the most part, a standard Magic the Gathering release didn't have like, hey, this is going to be the chase card. It just happened to be whatever the best or most powerful card was that we could slam down the table and beat up on our friends with. Well, they have since pivoted and changed direction. While that card, that amazing good card to beat up on your friends with still has value, it's not all about that card anymore. As there is chase, there is subsets, there are themes, and different collections that players are wanting more than ever 
to put together. Some of them super on the nose, like serialized cards, and other a little bit more hidden with different meanings. You look at the full art Lord of the Rings set or Jurassic Park universes within from Ixalan recently. Things like that are wildly collectible, and these themes and collect, and, you know, this uptick in collectability seems to be a direct kind of pull from the Pokemon trading card game as people have always collected the same Pokemon out of every release or out of every release or their favorite character or wanting to open all of the cards in a set to create a master set things like that and when we talk about characters, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this is another area where Pokemon excels that Wizards of the Coast is trying to pull from. Think of the Commander Masters subset. Think of the idea of these, these special characters, your Jaces, your Okos, and your Outlaws of Thunder Junction, and Oko in a cowboy hat, and Tiny Bones in a cowboy hat. They're trying to make us care about these characters in ways that they haven't for some time now. Heck, we definitely get an intro with every release. Those intros are trying to tie more back into story, and especially with the release of something like March of the Machine, Wizards of the Coast is like, we're definitely committing to story! And while it might not be working the best that we wanted to, they're 100% trying to get us to buy in to the love of characters that Pokemon has had since its inception. And in true Wizards of the Coast fashion, when they can't get us to buy in, when they can't fix it, when they can't build it themselves, they just buy it, right? Universes Beyond is where this is a major explosion for Magic the Gathering. The idea that we are now tied and emotionally connected to the characters and IP of these sets really harkens back to the first Universes Re Beyond release with The Walking Dead and how that has built over the last three years. And I'm not saying it's the best way to do it. I'm not saying that this is the same magic that Pokemon cultivates when you want to collect every single Blastoise and the whole evolutionary chain and you just have fallen in love with that series of characters and Pokemon native to that universe. It's not the same at all. But it is a microwaved version and it does show a true acknowledgement from Wizards of the Coast that hey, we have to get people to care about characters and about stories and about themes and about ideas and these sets and things like that and for that reason it does seem like we have pulled that directly from the pokemon trading card game and while collectability characters and and the things that we love and that emotional attachment is all fine and good the big thievery the big one is well, it's revolving around price. I was trying to find a, a softball way to put it in, but hey, it's about the price of Wizards of the Coast products. And it's no secret. Wizards of the Coast have gone ham. They've gone crazy with their prices. But in the last year especially, they have shown an acknowledgement. They've shown a pivot, and they've shown uh, the ability to try to copy something that Pokemon does better than almost any other trading card game on the market. And to kind of picture what Pokemon does so well, let's do a thought exercise. You're anyone in the world, anyone, close your eyes, pick someone, you're that person. You walk into a game store and you have some amount of money that that person would have in their pocket. Now, I know most of you probably pictured yourself someone super wealthy or popular or famous or Justin Biebery or something. Think of the average person. Pokemon does a great job of saying no matter how much money you, right now, that person you are in your imagination, have in your pocket, we have something for you. Between our blister packs with three packs and a coin, to ETBs, to booster bundles, booster boxes, ultra premium collection, special ETB Pokemon Center here and there, there's something for almost everybody. And for the longest time, Wizards of the Coast main bread and butter was just their booster box, and then it expanded to booster box set, collector, play booster box, everything kind of booster box and above. And to their credit, they had tried to throw in products here and there to make us stick or maybe fill in holes for those lower price points, but they never really landed. But they seem to have shown a reinvigoration, reignition of that love or that desire to make these bundle products, these lower tier products feel a bit better. The starter kit from the Lord of the Rings series not only did a great job of bringing people into play, something that Pokemon does fine, I'm not saying nobody plays Pokemon, but listen, more people play Magic. That that part is not close, that's not arguable. 
we won't get too far down that rabbit hole to the scene bundles the collector bundles and then even bundles of the new set expanding the amount of products you get in those bundles kind of peeling back some of the auxiliary stuff that might work with pokemon fans but magic fans don't care about just to give us more packs to crack things like that are an acknowledgement of hey we really have to eat into these other price tiers that we are missing out on. And it hurts when they don't. We saw Commander Masters as we, as we tracked all those sales and Commander Masters dropped at these insane prices with no real affordable entry point. And well, the release suffered. There was nowhere to go if you had less than $240 in your pocket. And that's not a great way to have a release. We fast forward to today, and even in the last year, we have the Phyrexia All Will Be One Complete Bundle, the bundles for Outlaws of Thunder Junction, bundles for Lord of the Rings were super speci special. Even the special edition re-release of Lord of the Rings had cool things in the bundle with different ways to show off your card and your art, tying back all these ideas. But my point is, we show a renewed invigoration renewed love for bringing forth these products at these different price tiers and this is a massive win i think pokemon does this so well and i would be surprised if wizard of the coast wasn't in some boardroom somewhere saying hey all those people walking in with 40 bucks in their pocket we don't get any of that traffic we don't get kind of the box experience out of any of those consumers they're all going to pokemon maybe let's let's put a little effort into this let's see if we can pull from some of there and it's doing a good job but to their credit, Wizards of the Coast don't always make the best decisions, but in this right, they have made some pretty good ones, and they have left on the table, left on the shelf, if you will, things that would not work for Magic the Gathering that Pokemon do. And the first thing that comes to mind is print runs. No, no, we're this far in the video, we're going to talk about print runs for Wizards of the Coast, but hey, if you're still here, this is going to be a fun discussion. Make sure you leave a comment below that you were still here, because then I'll know, and then you'll know, and I'll know that you know. Print runs, anyway. Pokemon prints a billion, trillion, gazillion boxes. They own their own printers. They don't have to compete or pay for print time. They just printer go burr and Pokemon product shoots out. And Wizards of the Coast was, I don't wanna say copying this, but maybe the pandemic made us all crazy. Or sorry, can I say, can I say the P word? I don't know. Maybe that time in the 2020s made us all crazy but Wizards of the Ghost was just printing things like a mad scientist or something up there, just letting things... They were printing things like Pokemon, let's put it that way. And thus, things were getting dumped on Amazon. They were getting flushed out the system. Products were holding no value, which surprisingly something is, is something that we as a Magic community greatly care about. And it really hurt our interest and love for the game. You fast forward to 2024, we have shown a renewed faith in the print system as collector booster boxes seem to be a little bit more limited than they used to. They seem the printer doesn't go burr for collector booster boxes while still maintaining the availability and accessibility of things like the play booster box from all of the recent sets because Magic's a game first. You have to be able to play it. And that's the other thing Magic the Gathering has left on the shelf and really excelled at. Kind of said, hey, Pokemon, you do your own thing. We are a gameplay system first. We we are gameplay people putting down cardboard, having fun with friends. That's what we do best, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Most releases have four deck commander sets now, which is a massive win. You can go to your friend's to your game store with your friends, buy a commander deck set off the shelf, and play commander it's absolutely mind-blowing we have more starter kit entry things in universes beyond and all of the universes beyond things that are meant to put outside eyes in on magic the gathering are focused on commander again the play experience again the social experience and the best way to probably introduce someone to the tcg space that hasn't been there before i don't think it's the best way to learn to play T a tcg especially magic the gathering but it's definitely the most social way too so all in all i really think that magic the gathering has stolen them from th some things from pokemon and has they've done it extremely well but i want to know what you think you know, normally conversations like this, topics like this, they don't hit the best on YouTube, but I want to do this on the channel every once in a while. So if you have thoughts on this, if you really like what we're doing here, make sure you click the associated buttons and make sure you click that like button. Share this video on a social media page, a forum or something like that, because it helps the video like this grow. It helps me know you guys want more content like this. And again, share your thoughts in the comment section, because I really do like discussions like this. We built a whole discord around it. There's a link below you can consider joining, but this is a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed. And until next next time you guys know me my name is josh and well i'll see you around all right goodbye